Hi, it's Jen with Astro T Astrology. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are on part three of our uh, true crime series, uh, The Astrology of a Serial Killer. Today on our victim list is Ted Bundy. Now, I was looking forward to this one, always been fascinated by him, and the more you look at this chart, you're gonna see why. So first, what we wanna do is we wanna take a look at the sun, moon, and ascendant. Now, Ted Bundy, history. He was born on November 24th, 1946 and died on January 24th, 1989. Um, so let's look at the sun moon ascendant. Now I don't have the sun up, but when I show you where it is, I think that if you did catch the last episode with John Wayne Gacy, you're going to see a similarity, similarity here. So he was actually born the day after a partial solar eclipse. So he had his sun and his moon in Sagittarius. Again, mutable. Um, and so the partial solar eclipse is on the 23rd. If you remember from our previous video with John Wayne Gacy, that he was also born during a solar eclipse in a mutable sign. So found that pretty fascinating. And one more fascinating thing is that we have one more serial killer that we're going to talk about during this series that also was born during a new moon solar eclipse. Um, see if you can guess who that is. So make sure that you hit the subscription or that you subscribe and then hit the notification bell so you get notified of that. And um, you know, throw out some guesses and see who you think it might be. Um, when I saw, I was like, what's happening here? I know that if I was having a baby, I'd probably try to avoid having it during the new moon from what I learned from doing this series. So, um, again, make sure to subscribe so you can see who and follow through the whole series. Um, so this eclipse was in Sagittarius and that was in his fifth house. So here's the first house here. He was a Leo ascendant and the fifth house was Sagittarius. So that is where um, his sun and moon were. So this is a night chart because everything's kind of below the horizon and you know, the sun and moon are right together. So, you know, usually you kind of focus more if it's a night chart on the, um, whatever luminary, you know, if it's a day chart, it's the sun. If it's the night chart, it's the moon. Well, this is both. So they're both in the same place. Um, so what do we know about Sagittarius. Uh, they're very likable, they're enthusiastic, they're idealistic, they're smart, but they also can be quick tempered, they can be restless. I found, you know, okay, that sounds about right. And then we have the ascendant in Leo. So I found this to be the most telling. Um, if you've ever read anything about Ted Bundy, and I've seen all the movies, books, shows, everything, podcasts on them. Um, Kind of always been a serial killer you know, nut. Um, but if you've read anything on him, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, Leos are very charismatic. You almost feel like you're drawn to them. Like they're, you know, it's the center of the earth. They're, they're, um, Leo is ruled by the sun. The planets ro um, rotate around the sun. So it's almost like the world revolves around them. And they know it. Uh, if you know any Leos, you know, Leo ascendants, they, they know that they just, people gravitate to them. Um, he had that hair, um, you know, that curly mane of hair. He just commanded attention. So very Leo. Um, you know, even at one point, while he was in prison, the police and prison guards were so captivated by him that they were very trusting of him, who knows why, um, so much that it led to one of his escapes because they trusted him and he could talk a good game and, you know, and ended up that he just snuck right out because they were all buddy buddy, taking pictures with him and all this. And that's just the kind of person that he was, that charismatic, you know, you think of the Sagittarians you know. They're always super likable, they're always charismatic. You think of the Leos that you know, they're very magnetic. So this is how he was, and this is probably how he got so many victims, how well, he got so many people to trust him. Um, so let's look a little deeper. So then we wanna look at the, the dignities and the debilities in his chart. So 
he has, first thing I see is Venus here in Scorpio. So Venus in Scorpio, um, that's in his fourth house, house of family, house of upbringing, home, um, and it is in its detriment. Uh, he also has Saturn over here in his first house of Leo, which is also in its detriment. Um, so because this is a night chart, again, going back to that, the major malefic in this chart is going to be uh, Saturn. So Saturn's going to be giving him the most issues and it's going to be the most problematic planet. So Saturn being in its detriment is just going to be that much more difficult. Um, it is going to be the biggest kind of planet working against him. Um, and I don't have it pictured here because I don't have a little circle of it, but his point of fortune is actually um, conjunct the Saturn. So this is kind of what led to his fame and his infamy, this, this kind of Saturn. Um, you know, and, and then the point of fortune is what kind of is, you know, what makes him him, what makes him this famous, you know, um, person that he ended up becoming. Uh, so with Saturn in detriment, it's almost like being used to disappointment, especially when it's in your first house. So you're kind of used to being um, disappointed or let down. Um, these people sometimes don't always like to play by the rules. They kind of want to do their own thing. Um, they can experience challenges that affect relationships, um, you know, because Saturn is that, that end plane, it's that block, it's got the, those barriers that it puts up and it kind of puts stops to things. So um, that's the last planet, that's the end. So it does put up those blocks. So there are gonna be difficulties there and with it in detriment, um, it's gonna be even more um, noticed. So. Venus in detriment, well, Venus, we know, represents love and relationships. So Venus in Scorpio, you know, is in a detriment. So it takes on that more, you know, instead of just being, you know, the regular happy-go-lucky Venus that just loves love and loves beauty and all that, it becomes more of like a obsessive. Uh, it can express, this can be expressed with a dominance and violence even. So, I mean, not everyone that has Venus and Scorpio is going to go out and murder a bunch of women, but when you put everything together, you know, hey. Uh, so now these two planets, Saturn and Venus, are also square to each other. So that's a 90 degree angle and that is an uncomfortable aspect. So that is an aspect that it's, it's not pleasant. It's something you have to work through. So again, that they're in detriment, they um, are square to each other. So we have one, our major benefic in a, nice, in a night chart, which is Venus, is in its detriment. And um, Saturn, our major malefic, is also in its detriment and they are square to each other. So a little bit of negativity there. I don't know why my cat is doing that. I really hope he stops. Piggy, stop. Um, so. Uh, what I learned about Ted Bundy is supposedly these murders or his desire to kill stemmed from a bad breakup that he had. It caused him to want to hurt women. Um, said most of his victims even had a ser similar look uh, and hairstyle to that ex-girlfriend. Um, another thing that I noticed is his Saturn is in retrograde. Uh, so going over past issues. Piggy, Piggy. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, God. Um, so, it's going over past issues. So, kind of going back over that past breakup and, you know, maybe bringing, you know, things into the present, taking it out on people. So, let's now look at uh, the family. So, father is represented by the fourth house and the ruler of the fourth house. So, the fourth house, again, is Scorpio. Um, is where the Venus is in detriment and everything. Um, so the ruler of Scorpio is Mars. So can't really get into too much about the father. Um, 
because he never really knew who his father was. But Scorpio uh, does signify that there could have been secrets. So secrets in the fourth house, family secrets, secrets of his upbringing. Um, so another thing that I've read about him that makes a lot of sense is that, you know, the father, they never knew who it was. They said it could have been um, an Air Force veteran or even his own grandfather. So I would think that would be a pretty big secret. Um, so, you know, if something like that is covered up. You really see kind of that, that Scorpio in the fourth house, like hiding the, um, the who his father was, um, especially if it was his own grandfather. Uh, so then we want to look at mother. So his mother or mothers in general in a chart are represented by the 10th house and the 10th house ruler. So the 10th house is Taurus and uh, the rule of Taurus is uh, Venus, which is in detriment in the fourth house. So it just this crazy circle of everything going back to these detrimental planets this venus that's supposed to be a, the major benefic in a night chart it's really just you know so um again in scorpio so secrets so the mother is keeping secrets so um and interesting with this you know home family secrets now this guy is a monster you're a monster i'd like you to go outside or something um Oh, it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> so, um, it's, so what I heard is that he was told, um, at a young age that his mother was actually his sister because when she gave birth to him, she was very young. She was unwed. Now this was very taboo, very Scorpio. You know, you think Scorpio taboos, eighth house type feel. Um, and at this time in 1946, it was, not the normal for, you know, there to be unwed mothers and single mothers. Um, so they led him to believe that his sister was at, or his, that his mother was actually his sister. So then we want to kind of take a look at uh, the third house, siblings. So we have Neptune in the third house, and this is in Libra. So Neptune is about kind of smoke and mirrors um, and, you know, just untruths or kind of blurred lines. Well, what's the ruler of the third house of Libra? What rules Libra? It's Venus. And where's Venus? Is in his fourth house in Scorpio, in detriment. Um, so again, there's, there's deceit, there's lies. Um, and deception around mother, father, and siblings. So you see how it all just really makes a lot of sense. When you see his chart, it's pretty much spelled right out. Um, probably the most, one of the most fascinating charts I've looked at when you think of that type of thing, you know, just how everything is coming back to these detrimental planets uh, and, you know, that are supposed to be beneficial and aren't. Anyway, so Scorpio, Neptune, you know, everything's kind of covered up and everything's, you know, blurry and unsure about things. So, um, you know, Neptune in the third house, you're unsure. Is this my mother? Is it my sister? What's going on here? Anyway, so Chiron, now Chiron is our wounded, um, is our wound. So Chiron is also in his fourth house, um, Scorpio. So shows past traumas, whatever that may have caught been caused his past trauma, that, that unhealable wound is caused by, you know, maybe things and his upbringing and the deception, you know, that Scorpio. So Chiron and Scorpio can cause obsession. It can cause compulsion, that need and desire for control. Um, you know, the modern ruler of Scorpio is Pluto. When you think Pluto, that is that, that control, that authority. Um, he obviously was obsessed, wanted control, um, you know, lost his girlfriend and decided to do these things to gain control, to gain control over women. Um, his Pluto, which is the modern ruler of Scorpio, is in his first house of self. So, you know, just 
really shows that you know he kind of became you know and when you think of modern rulers and traditional rulers um scorpio has you know the modern ruler of pluto and then the traditional ruler of mars i kind of blend those i don't necessarily fall either way i go a little more with the traditional but i see that you know with with ones like scorpio and pisces and um Aquarius, those ones that kind of have the the one rulership from the traditional ruler and then the new modern rulership, I see them more as a blend. So that's how it differentiates them from, you know, the regular Mars and Aries. Um, so this placement of Chiron in the fourth house can also uh, cause a fear of loss. That again desire for control and often these individuals they can really put themselves in bad situations where they can lose control um yeah makes sense to me um so it's really hard next you know in the last two episodes we did we looked at the solar arcs and transits but it's really hard to look at them in his chart because we really don't know when the murder started we know when we uh, the ones he was convicted for when those happened, but they say that he could have murdered people as early as 1969. The first documented was until 1974. Um, yeah, but the one thing I did notice was um, that his solar arc with Venus, so the solar arc is a, a, a degree for a year of life. So at 23, his solar arc Venus meets Mars. So that's kind of like you know, almost, you know, a couple getting together, that male and female energy um, coming together. Well, and this happened when he was 23. At 23, he met his longtime girlfriend that was actually with him um, until he got arrested for the murders. And he actually helped, uh, became like a father figure to her daughter. And she was like a constant there. Well, he was doing all this extracurricular activity she was there so she was almost like his constant his his main love but yeah he did this other stuff and you do hear that a lot with you know even John Wayne Gacy he had a family um and other ones just have normal lives but that's doesn't have to do with astrology well maybe it does um so the general feel of this chart is is a fixed fire um it would be Leo, kind of a Leo feel, um, his ascendant rulers, Leo, um, and uh, the ruler of that would be uh, Jupiter. So Jupiter is in his, um, guess, <laughs> is in his fourth house. So the, um, no, it's not Jupiter, that's totally incorrect. Um, so the ruler of Leo in the solar eclipse. Um, and the solar eclipse, so, and that is um, the sun. So that's in his fourth house. We also have Jupiter in his fourth house. So, I'm sorry, I read my notes incorrectly. Um, so we talked about this again with the John Wayne Gacy episode, getting back to the solar um, eclipse. Um, it can lead to a, you know, a, more of a chaotic feel in life. Um, these strong personalities that they're trying to overcompensate the sun almost being well not almost being but being muted by the moon so they maybe overcompensate uh, just by being like overly passionate um, uh, with that new moon energy we have Jupiter in here just really expanding all this just almost negativity all this this just chaotic obsession obsessive compulsions you know um, that Marsy, you know, Jupiter with Mars is really just pushing that and propelling him to do these things. Um, so was it almost destiny for them to become who they were? When you look at this chart, you almost could kind of see it. Uh, so other similarities to uh, Gacy is that he was also big into politics. Now he was more uh, in the Republican Party, uh, his North Node is up here in Gemini. Um, so he gave that perception of intelligence. He wanted to be a part of something bigger, a bigger group, that Republican Party, um, you know, 11th house groups. Um, and then interestingly too, uh, his death was 
just days after the full moon in Leo on January 24th, 1989. So um, the full moon kind of is, it's, it's about culminations, culmination of him. It was in his first house. It was in Leo. So very personal to say the least. So I find it extremely interesting that again, let's look at the chart. Let's get the feel of it. So it is a fixed fire chart, you know, by feel, but there's so much mutable energy going on. So when you look at, we have you know, the sun, moon, Mars, the sun, moon, Mars, um, and Sagittarius. And we also have, uh, the nodes in mutable signs we have, which I didn't even get into is we have Lilith also in, uh, pretty much conjunct with that, uh, new moon energy. Um, so then we also have, you know, other, mutable things going on with um, Uranus and the North Node up here in um, Gemini. So we talked about, you know, being that mutable force, uh, that ability to kind of go with the flow and just really, um, uh, you know, be that cleanup crew. And obviously he did. And you know, this is kind of what happened with him. And this is just the life that, you know, he led. So I find it very interesting. So when, when we think about uh, John Wayne Gacy is that he was born on the new moon and then he died on a new moon. But where um, um, Ted Bundy, he was born on that new moon and then died on the full moon. So just like that pattern just comes to that culmination and then he was done. So that's all about Ted Bundy. I hope you enjoyed this video. So again, if you are pregnant and you have a baby during a new moon, I wouldn't think he's going to be a serial killer. I would just hope for the best. So again, make sure you subscribe and let's see who that third person that is born on another new moon is going to be. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you get no, um, you get updated with notifications of upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, questions, anybody that you'd like to suggest, I'd love to hear from you. So make sure you leave a comment and I will see you soon. And next week, stay tuned. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.